Hello and welcome to the Ghosts and Folklore podcast. I'm Mark Royce and on each episode I investigate a different, weird and wonderful subject. And on this episode we are going to look at the incredible powers of water. Yes, water. Plain old water, or more specifically, spring water for most of this episode, which has many, many uses, such as repelling evil spirits and witches. And some of this folklore does get a little bit dark, a little bit gothic in places, as regular listeners have come to expect. But at the same time, at the other end of the spectrum... It's also quite practical and useful as well, such as how water can be turned into wine. No, no, and of course, by that I mean magically. I, I don't mean doing it the hard way by stamping on grapes and things. Now, this episode is something of a companion piece, a sister episode, to an episode I recorded about a month or so ago, episode 45, and that looked at the folklore of the sea. So that was looking at the folklore of the salty waters in the coasts around Wales. For this episode, we are moving inland and we are looking at the glistening, sparkling water which flows inland, as mentioned, most of which involves springs, as opposed to the water that pirates sail on and sharks swim in and If you've listened to the last episode, you'll know that the devil sails around on in search of souls to take back to hell. And the folklore on this episode comes from one of my regular favorite old folklorists, Mary Trevelyan, a wonderful folklorist from the Neath area. Originally, she gathered stories and collected little tidbits of folklore in the early 1900s, but much of her research dates from centuries, centuries ago. And as I've mentioned before with Trevelyan, she does not mince her words at all. Her folklore, it's like reading bullet points. It is so quick. It is so rapid fire that you might have to to hold on tight to keep up with some of this folklore. It's just, there was this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And you'll probably get more folklore in this episode than the last 10 combined. There is that much to squeeze in. So let's dive straight into it to begin at the beginning. And it was said in the older folklore that spring water drawn between 11 and 12 p.m. on Christmas or Easter night turned into wine. See, straight in with my favourite. If you want spring water to turn into wine, you have to draw it between 11 and midnight on Christmas night or Easter night. But it's not just wine. This water was also considered good for colic, and all abdominal pains. I don't know if that's after you've transformed it into wine, in which case wine is great for colic and all abdominal pains. I find wine is pretty much good for most things in life. But we are also told that running water drawn at midnight from any important spring on St. John's Eve would remain fresh and pure a whole year. Not so much of an issue for us nowadays because we can just turn on a tap and have running water. But back in the old days, running water drawn at midnight from an important spring on St. John's Eve would keep fresh until you did it again 12 months later. The next date in our water calendar year is Easter Day. And we are told that water drawn before sunrise downstream and in silence was proof against witches and evil spirits. There you go, another useful one. So you have to draw it downstream before sunrise in silence. So don't don't go talking to yourself on Easter Day and hang on to that. It's a bit like 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 holy water, I guess. It's something you hang on to just in case any witches and evil spirits come to cause havoc 
in your house. Now, the next one is slightly more complicated than just going to a certain place at a certain time on a certain night or, or morning of the year. You might want to write instructions down for this one. I did, I did warn you that Trevelyan is very, very rapid fire. And what you'll also pick up on with Trevelyan, if you read or, or listen to enough of it, is how important Christianity is to so much of this folklore, too, to Welsh culture. It comes through already. We've only just started, and we are looking at the important dates in the Christian calendar. And this next one applies to every Sunday. Sunday, the Lord's Day, this bit of folklore takes place. And we are told by Trevelyan that water drawn before sunrise on any Sunday morning in one jug from three separate and flowing springs was magical in its use and influence. So if you want magical water for whatever reason, maybe you just want to bathe in it. But if you want magical water, you have to draw it before sunrise on the Lord's Day, but in one jug from three separate and flowing springs. So don't don't go spilling any on the way as you dash from spring one to spring two to spring three. It sounds a bit like a relay, doesn't it? Ideally, you want to find three springs nice and close together to avoid the chance of spillage. And sticking with these Christian dates, it was customary in many parts of Wales for young men and maidens to walk to the nearest important spring on Easter Monday, draw water into jugs and throw flowers on the surrounding grass, stones or bushes. And we are told this was prevalent in Glamorgan and Carmarthenshire in the early part of the 19th century and Trevelyan carries on by saying that her informant no name but her informant whoever it might have been gleaned particulars about this from his grandfather of the flower offerings at spring and saw it as a remnant of Celtic water worship because the youths and maidens believed this water drawing would bring them good luck for the year. And I do love this folklore, which seems to combine the the wonderful Christian traditions, but with this element of nature worship, something which harks back maybe to the times of the Druids. I don't know, but let's stick to the facts or... Let's stick to the facts in inverted commas as Trevelyan recorded them, not me going off on a tangent. So back to it. And we are told that Welsh girls formally told their own fortunes in spring water on May Day morning. May Day morning, it's the day for girls to tell their fortune. And there is one spring in particular which had quite a unique way of telling people what was going to happen in the future, which can be found in the parish of Caddickston, Juxta, Barry, in the town of Barry, in, in modern-day Vale of Glamorgan, in the south of Wales. And this spring would, quite unusually, flow abundantly in an unfruitful year. But if the water was slow in coming, there would be plenty of crops, grain and sheep. So the opposite, really, of what the water was doing. Lots and lots of lovely flowing water. It's going to be a bit lean. But if it dries up a little, not so much water. Well, on the plus side, you're going to get lots of crops and grain and sheep. And it wasn't alone. We are told of an other spring near the foot of Plyn Limon somewhere where the people went to see it. And if the water ran quickly, they said this year everything will be dear. And by dear, I mean expensive dear. Everything will be expensive. So at the foot of Plyn Leam on the highest point of the Cambrian Mountains, if this secret spring there was flowing freely, people knew there'd be a shortage on other things that would put the prices up. And hence the saying, this year, everything will be very dear. Presumably, if it was the other way around, and if that was also dried up, maybe they all said, this year, everything will be very cheap. Who knows? 
But moving on, and these next bits don't really apply to certain places and certain dates. So this is something we could all, in theory, practice today if we so desired. If we wanted to embrace these old folkloric powers in our, our modern worlds. And people were warned not to spurt or scatter the water from their hands after washing the first thing in the morning, else they would scatter their good luck for the day. So no spurting and no scattering that water first thing, unless you want bad luck. To spill water while carrying it from the spring or brook was an omen of sorrow. Again, this isn't something we really have to worry about so much. Nowadays, I think we, we take it for granted, don't we? We'll turn on the tap, there's our water. But back when people had to t take, a, take a donkey to the well with them, maybe, to get their water, spilling it was an omen of sorrow. And I guess if for no other reason than the fact that you'd have to turn around again, drag that donkey back to the well again, and do the whole thing a second time. Now, two persons should not wash in the same water without first making the sign of the cross in it. A nice straightforward one, I guess. If, if you are going to share water, make that sign of the cross and maybe maybe it'll keep away any vampires who were going to have a wash with you. Maybe that cross makes it holy. I, I don't know. Let's, let's hope so, shall we? And now that I've dragged vampires into it, we are going into slightly darker territory here because we are told that water and corpses are said to disagree. Water and corpses do not get on with each other. Seems a bit strange. You'd have thought a corpse would have been quite quiet there. Well, unless they're a vampire again. But we are told that the body of a drowned man, specifically a man, always floats face downwards. But a woman's keeps face upwards. The drowning man's body remains at the bottom of the river until the gall bursts. All of which, I think, leaves us with some quite unpleasant imagery. So let us not dwell upon it. Suffice to say, men float downwards, women face upwards. Let's move on to babies. Happy bouncing babies. As mentioned, Trevelyan not only comes at you thick and fast with these bullet points of folklore, she also likes to jump around. We've gone from corpses floating at the bottom of rivers to happy bouncing babies. And we are told that rainwater baths will make babies talk early. Maybe that's a good thing, maybe it's not. But if you want your baby to start talking early, give it a bath in rainwater. Water that will not readily boil is bewitched. If you're having trouble getting hot coffee, maybe, just maybe, you've upset a witch somewhere who is stopping it from boiling boiling. But the good news is there is a technique, an old folkloric technique, for outfoxing any witches who might have it in for your coffee, and that is to boil it using three different kinds of wood. Again, we're going back to the days before people could switch on a kettle, but when you boil that water for your coffee, use three different kinds of wood. And I really can't think of anything worse that a witch could do. Although I should stress, this is the, the old stereotypical evil witches. All of the witches I know personally are lovely, lovely people who would not, I would like to think, mess with my coffee. Anyway, moving on. And sticking with rainwater, did you know that money washed in clear rainwater cannot be stolen? I am assuming this is better for coins than paper money. Don't blame me if you wash a £20 note or a $20 bill or wherever it is in the world you're listening to this. Don't blame me if you wash it and it crumbles. But certainly the coins washed in clear rainwater cannot be stolen. And the next one, in getting water from a brook, it is lucky to draw it with a pitcher downstream. And I, sp I spoke too soon when I said things had gotten light and fluffy with babies. We're back into the darkness again. Good old Trevelyan. And we are told 
that pigs bathed in water in which killed swine have been scalded will thrive better and grow well. I guess the folklore itself is okay, but it's not really an image you want a picture of pigs bathing in water where killed swine have... Well, you, you, you get the idea. Let's move on. The water in which a babe, back to babies, is washed for the first three months of its life used to be thrown under a green tree to make the child thrive. As mentioned earlier, this is another one of those lovely bits of folklore which does hark back to the, the, the worship of nature, maybe back to the, the Celtic Druidic times. And drawing this, this, this link, this connection between humanity, I guess, in a way, the, the growth of a child and the growth of a tree. There is, there is symbolism and all sorts of things at work there. And that, that is probably a story for another day. Now, moving on, there was an old belief in Wales that if a man wrapped up in the skin of an animal just killed was laid down alone beside a waterfall he would have the future revealed to him by the sound of the waters. Which is one way of seeing the future, but sticking with animals, if a person washed or sprinkled any kind of animal in one of the fountains of healing, the water lost its virtue. So, if you know of any magical fountains, it's best not to go washing any animals in them. And moving from animals to reptiles, from crawling things to slithering things. This is quite a useful piece of law. Because if a person bitten by an adder, a viper, or any kind of serpent could leap across the nearest water before the reptile vanished, they would lose the venom and not die. If it was only a small rain pool, it would suffice. So if anyone is bitten by a snake ever, all they have to do is jump over some water before that reptile sneaks away, before the snake sneaks away, and even a little a puddle will do it, a rain pool will suffice. And if you wanted to get some rain, let's say there's been a, a drought or something. It's not something we have to worry about that often in Wales. We, we have more than enough rain. Thank you very much. But if you did want to have some rain, we are told that the pouring out of water in seasons of drought was supposed to bring rain. And in the days of old... This was done with considerable ceremony. It was a big event, a big do to pour out. Well, to you, you could say to waste water when it was at its most precious. There was a big ceremony and it is a common expression among the peasantry of Wales to say, don't spill the water about unless you wish for rain. When rainy weather prevails, the farm maids are told, if you keep spilling the water about, we shall have more rain and we have had quite enough already. A sentiment I can agree with right now. We have had quite enough already. Let's have the summer instead. Now, the old people used to say you must not throw stones into the well or you will raise a storm. The same was said about lakes and rivers. At one time, nothing irritated aged persons more than to see boys and girls pelting the well or river with stones. Nowadays, I think aged people would be just happy to see the kids outdoors pelting anything just to get them away from the screens for five minutes. But back then, back then, pelting a well was a big no-no. And sticking with these old aged people, as they are described, they had another bit of law, which I think is a little bit more useful. And to quote, very old people always spat thrice on the ground before crossing water after dark to avert the evil influences of spirits and witches. Back to spirits and witches. If you part from a friend beside a bridge, you will part forever. To avert the possibility of this, it was customary to cross together, 
take Farwell on the other side, and the one who remained at home had to return alone. So, if you're saying farewell, do it on the other side, and make sure you spit three times before doing so to avert the evil influences of spirits and witches. And to wrap up this selection of watery lore, here's one I think we can get behind in our environmentally conscious times and maybe it just goes to show that maybe all of this old folklore isn't as ridiculous as it sometimes appears or as i make it appear maybe and that was it was unlucky to take any pay for water those who did so would have to cry in torment for a few drops water should be free to anyone there's no need to buy it in, in wasteful plastic bottles. Water should be free. And those who profit from it, maybe this is going to the extremes a little bit, but those who did so would have to cry in torment for a few drops. And on that cheerful note, let us conclude our latest swim through the spring of watery folklore. As mentioned, we looked at the sea back on 45, and I am sure in the future we look at more. I imagine it'll be rivers coming up next, but don't don't hold me to that or anything. And as always, if you do not want to miss that one or any of the other wonderful episodes coming up, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you have any queries, any thoughts, any questions, I'm quite easy to track down on social media. All of which just leaves me to say thank you very much for listening. Dioch and var jaun am grando. I'm Mark Reese. This has been my Ghosts and Folklore podcast. It's the best. It's the beautiful. It's the only Ghosts and Folklore podcast beaming to you from Wales to the world. Until next time, no stop.